Bhaji underscore I. Said. D. Mr. G, 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 Mr.
spinning while streaming on a Hawaiian vacation. I'm more than white, Levi's were covering his femur until he covered them with coffee and creamer. Mr. G, Mr. G, Mr. G, Mr. G, he's your average teacher, Don Isle of Streamer. having a wonderful afternoon. Today is Wednesday. We have class on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <coughs> Whew, hope everybody's having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we have a wonderful lecture all about Texas today. Texas is the 48th state that we've done. 49th will be Alaska and number 50 will be Hawaii. If you're wondering about me, if you haven't ever seen this before, if you're not watching this live, if you're just turn this on, I'm Mr. G, and my website is gxnetwork.live. That's a uh, biography about me and a resume about me as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and get into things quickly. Uh, we're going to be learning all about Texas today. It's going to be about an hour long class. I'm going to talk about things about Texas. And uh, then I'm going to show you some slides about some fun facts about Texas and uh, some fun foods in Texas as well. I will also touch on uh, historical elements of Texas too. So, <clears throat> to start off, um, well, Texas has is the second largest state. Uh, in area and population. So the only state that's bigger than Texas is Alaska. And the only state that has more people than Texas is California. Uh, Texas has some of the largest cities in the United States. Dallas, Houston. Uh, Houston's actually the fourth largest U.S. city. Uh, and San Antonio. San Antonio is the seventh largest U.S. city. And San Antonio is the oldest uh, city, municipality in Texas, I should say. Uh, the population of San Antonio... Goodbye, Paul Bastic. What is up with all the streams on YouTube? Getting gossip lately. Uh, the population of San Antonio city limits is about 1.5 million. Um, and the uh, metro area is 2.5 million. So if you're asking, like, whoa, didn't you say it's the seventh largest city? There's only 1.5 million. Yes, I should uh, clarify. Uh, San Antonio is the seventh largest city area-wise. Mm. Uh, Population-wise, not so much. Uh, another large city is Austin. Uh, Austin has about a million people. Um, the metro area of Houston has about 7 million people, which makes it one of the largest metro areas in the United States. The metro area of Dallas has even more. has about 7.5 million people, um, which makes it uh, even uh, one of the largest areas. The metro area of Austin, which includes San Marcos, is about 2.2 million so, uh, but there's about a million people that live in between San Antonio and Austin, about an hour and a half drive, a drive that I've actually walked myself. Um, if you look in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to put up a, uh, a map of Texas, a, a simple map of Texas. I'll go ahead and make it on the uh, big screen if I can here. All right, so uh, you see Austin. 
um, is right there in the middle of the state. It's what you would call Central Texas. And then uh, where it says the Alamo down below there, that's where San Antonio is. So I actually grew up in San Antonio, Texas on the north side, on the wealthier part of San Antonio. And, uh, but I spent about 10 or 12 years maybe living in Austin, Texas. And one time I actually walked from where it says the Alamo to Austin, Texas. And uh, that's in my first book, Gonzo Education. Uh, you can find uh, a little bit more information about Gonzo Education. Uh, you can check out my Twitter. It's on the screen right there. Uh, but back to uh, Texas here. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just go into the uh, the Texas state animal is the Texas longhorn. I put up an image of the longhorn right here. I'll go ahead and put it on the other side of the screen. So yeah, the Texas Longhorn, and the number most popular school in Texas is the University of Texas, the Longhorns. This is the Longhorn symbol. Oh, sure. um, As I've mentioned before, I uh, have, you know, uh, I graduated from the University of Texas and uh, wrote a book about it because uh, in my particular case, I actually dropped out of high school and uh, then graduated from their journalism school, which is the second ranked journalism school in the United States. So it's a very prestigious school. Uh, they have like a 15% acceptance rate. So it's really hard to get into that school. And I'm the only person to ever drop out of high school and then graduate from that school. Did you hear me? Do you guys hear me? I'm the only person to ever do that. Class, how many people have walked on the moon? Hmm? How many? 13. 13. 13. You see that big fucking rock in the sky? That's called the moon, class. The fucking moon, right? And how many human beings? There's been billions and billions of freaking humans for thousands of years, for tens of thousands of years, and they've all looked up at this moon in the sky, right? And they're like, whoa. In 252, I'm sure they're proud to have had you. A thousand years ago, 5,000 years ago, they, uh, all those ancient ancestors would look at that moon and be like, whoa, I wonder if that's made of cheese. I wonder if I could go walk on there. And out of the billions and billions of people that have been on Earth, 13, only 13, have walked on the moon. So, that's why when I'm, I'm pitching my book, Gonzo Education, uh, one of the main points I make is more people have walked on the moon than did what I did in that book. So, and you know... It's something I'm really proud of, but to put it in objective standards, like, oh, anybody can go to UT and graduate from there. Anybody can do that. Really, bitch? Because fucking more people have walked on the moon, son. All right, anyways. So that's the Texas state animal. Also, I should mention, uh, it's also the armadillo. The armadillo is also the Texas state animal. Animal. And I think there used to be some sort of team as the armadillos, I forget. But I've seen an armadillo in Texas. The last year I was in Texas, I saw an armadillo. I've seen them before that, too. But you never want to get close to an armadillo because they can give you leprosy. And uh, if you know anything about lepers, uh, there used to be one of the largest leper colony here in Hawaii on um, it's a fucking Molokai Island. Uh, they since have, I think there's still one leper's colony, leprosy colony. Here in Hawaii. There's one other leper, uh, leper's colony here in Hawaii. It's the last one. And it only has about, in the world, I think, actually. And it only has about 10 people. So, leprosy, um, it's almost been eradicated. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, continuing on, the Texas uh, state lizard Texas. is the uh, Texas horny toad. And you see these all around Texas. They actually have these in Hawaii, or they have lizards that look sure, exactly sure. like these. I know a lot about Texas. That's why we're te I'm teaching this freaking class today, okay? All right? But uh, I was mentioning about the University of Texas, which on the board here. You guys can see the board. Uh, we have the University of Texas. 252. How many days in Texas? The Texas state flag. 
I, I was born and raised in Texas. And then Waterburger. One thing that I miss about Texas, I don't miss the weather. I don't miss the overly friendly people. And I don't miss the cities or the crime. Uh, but I do miss Waterburger. Waterburger uh, is a delicious Texas uh, hamburger place. And um, I don't have an image of it here. I guess I printed out an image. 252. How many black people live in Texas? I don't know. Uh, the Texas State Bird is the Mockingbird. Um, it's actually a decent bird if you're like in a, on a trail or on a hike and you see a mockingbird. If you know how to whistle, uh, you can whistle and the bird will uh, whistle back. So if you're like, the bird will sometimes go, you know, if you teach it how. So birds are, are very intelligent animals as well. Uh, also, I think that... About 50% the rest of cows. I think the Texas State Bird used to be the Roadrunner. Uh, UTSA, they're known as the Roadrunners. All right, so uh, the Texas State Tree is the pecan tree. Um, they have lots of uh, pecan trees there. And I remember one time I was living in downtown San Antonio and I had just moved into this house this, with this guy, Joby. He's, he's, I mentioned him in my book. But I moved in and his refrigerator is empty and there's no food. I'm like, I'm like, do you want me to drive you to the store? And he's like, well, we can go to the store tomorrow. Uh, Frontline Journey says. But there's a... Uh, Pecan like tree. The There's a pecan tree. Thank you, Frontline Genesis. Uh, Frontline, I, I, I want to get my gaming computer fixed as soon as possible. Uh, hopefully, Jay. Bombastic. What are the primary industries in Texas? Uh, okay, I'll get to that in a second, Bombastic. Um, um, but the uh, JR is going to be coming over this afternoon. Hopefully, we'll have some progress uh, with my computer. So, uh, attending to uh, Bombastic's question here. Uh, what are the major industries in Texas? R.S.J. The Mermaid. Hey! Said, Aluga Mr. G, I have a live ride with friends in 40 minutes, but I'm here now. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley J. Smiley face. Smile. Thank you, Mrs. J. I appreciate it. Uh, not many people showed up for class. I hope I didn't ostracize anybody uh, up uh, by mentioning somebody else. Another, Thumbs up, HTTPS. Slash three streamer slash that's slash no, slash that nothing of mine. And so we'll continuing on here. Uh, but thank you all for coming. Uh, Genesis, I know you're a big gamer, and I'm going to have my gaming computer set up really soon here. Uh, Mrs. J, I know you have a really busy schedule, so I really appreciate you stopping by today's class. Uh, once again, I am continuing the schedule Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 o'clock Hawaii time. So it's easy to remember. You know, oh, sure. I'm going to get some of 12 o'clock Hawaii time. Uh, and I'm doing that uh, and continuing on. RSJ, the mermaid. We've done 48 Said. states so far. Much love, G. Always enjoy it. Thank you, Mrs. J. Uh, we've done, uh, Texas will be the 48th state. Uh, Texas was admitted to the Union in 1845. I think it was, it wasn't the 48th state. But, but this is our 48th state. And then we have Alaska and Hawaii. Um, after that, I'm going to do Puerto Rico, maybe a couple of the territories. And then we're going to start right back up with... Arizona, one of uh, Mrs. J's favorite states, and one of my favorite states too. And we're going to start right back with Arizona, and we're going to go through all 50 states again, okay? And we'll learn something new each time as well, because that's the funnest thing about teaching, is you also learn too. And that's what we have scheduled for these next couple weeks, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Oh, rest, Jay, the <clears throat> as so, well as many other, nice. As well as many other uh, classes and uh, different broadcasts. And G's home state and most famous resident. And uh, me and uh, Cody's uh, number one fan of, uh, we, we also have some uh, plans and opportunities nice. as well. Said. Uh, he might teach a late night class G. tonight, most I don't know. Uh, but continuing on with today's class, somebody asked the top said industries said in Texas, and I really want to cover green. that. Because Texas, I'm very proud of being born and raised in Texas. Me and my twin brother, we were the largest babies ever in Kerrville Hospital. They've since built a bigger hospital. But at the time, 
We were my mother's second set of twins, which is very rare. Okay, okay, and join Mr. G's Discord, HTTPS, Thank you, Mrs. J. Everybody join the Discord. Discord for the, the most up-to-date updates. All right. Um, and also, you can join uh, the, the uh, classroom uh, Instagram as well, uh, which is Mr. G Livestream. And that's specifically the classroom Instagram just for the classes. So, industries in Texas. Sure, Texas is number one in many categories in the United States. Texas is the only state other than Hawaii that used to be its own country. There's a clause in the Texas Constitution which states that Texas can withdraw and secede from the United States at any time, and which has been on their mind, because back to industries, Texas leads the nation in some very important industries. Texas is number one in oil. Texas is number one in gas. Texas is number one in beef. Texas is number one in cotton. Texas is number one in wool. And Texas is getting almost number one in tech as well. And, and those are very big industries as well. Oil, gas, beef, cotton, technology. Uh, the whole entire economy of Texas is about two or three trillion. It's the second largest economy behind California. If Texas uh, was its own country, which, like I said, Undonkey. it's Set. once been before. To the electric cars take over. There's only 11 countries in the in the world that have a larger GDP than Texas. The Texas GDP is over two trillion. And now Elon Musk is, and Joe Rogan are moving there. That's only going to increase it. Why do so many people move to Texas? Uh, there's no uh, um, personal income tax on Texas. Uh, there's no uh, state tax on Texas. Uh, property taxes are reasonable and sales tax is reasonable as well. So they have low taxes as well. Um, I think that answers the questions about industries. Um, as far as particular industries, uh, Texas does have a warm climate, but it does get very cold. It freezes about 20 or 30 days of the year in South Texas, where I'm from, because that's something I just knew. I grew up there. But in South and Central Texas and San Antonio, oh, Austin, it freezes about 30 Set. days of the year. Yeah, their entire power grid went down and screwed residents during that big storm. That's true. That's true. I'm going to eat a coffee candy. Because I'm the teacher. Night bot. Bed. Help Mr. G with a donation through Screen Elements. HTTP. This is such a good teacher candy. Coffee candy. Slash MRG underscore life. Slash tip. No, but back to the economy of Texas. They have one of the largest economies in the world. I mean. In the climate. As far as their agriculture goes. The new merch is here. Pog Champ. Check it out. They can grow many things. Not as much as Hawaii or Florida or California. Hawaii, Florida, and California all have Texas beat. Texas is huge. Um, from the, it's it's closer from El Paso to California when, uh, it, than it is from El Paso to Lubbock. So that's how big Texas is. Like I said, it's the second largest state. It's closer from New York to Chicago than it is from Beaumont to El Paso. So Texas is is a huge state with huge cities. Um, so the climate does vary. Where I'm from in South Central Texas, we have the best Mexican food. The San Antonio Spurs are a popular uh, basketball team. Um, I sold the newspaper, the number one newspaper in South Texas, called the San Antonio Express News. I won't talk about that much. But I will tell you, out of, out of the whole southern part of the state of Texas, me, this guy right here, Mr. G, sold more newspaper subscriptions than any other um, salesman for the San Antonio Express News. I was no, I broke every single sales record, and that goes to show because that, that was something that was very common in the late '90s to you know for newspaper salesmen, and it's something that I started off um, you know as a as a successful point in my life, which I've had many successes in my life at just about anything that I've put my mind to, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise as well. If you want to hear the truth, let me tell you straight from me, straight from the lion's mouth. So it has 10 different climate zones in Texas. Hawaii has oh, 12 different climate zones. Said. It's a G breaking records. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Hawaii has 12 different climate zones, lacking only Arctic. And Texas has 10 different climate zones. So Texas actually has uh, Hawaii. I mean, uh, Hawaii has Texas beat as far as climate zones. 
Uh, let me see if I can show you a map with the uh, climate. The underscore here. Smith underscore six hundred and sixty. Hey. Good morning, everyone. I, I can show you on the uh, on the board here. It's 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 just after twelve in Hawaii. I'll I'll put a picture of Texas up on the board here, uh, just to give you. MRSJ the mermaid. Okay. Said. Good afternoon, there. So. Uh, the northern Texas, when you think of Texas, a lot of people think it's flat or it's desert. But that's only in the western part, the very far western part, and the northern part. The northern part would be the northern plains. I know you can't really see on the uh, map on the board here, so I'll close it up. Um, but then it also has the Gulf Coast, which is in the Gulf of Mexico. The Piney Woods, which is in the uh, east Texas, Houston, uh, north of Houston area. Uh, the South Texas Plains. The hill countries, uh, where you find Kerrville, Texas, and Fredericksburg, Texas, and also the German part of Texas. Yes, uh, there's a section of Texas in the hill country uh, where it had a lot of German uh, immigration in the late 1800s, and they formed uh, their own community. Um, I actually spent a decent amount of time studying uh, these people and uh, their German heritage, and they actually speak a particular type of German called German Texan as well. Um, it's, it's since died out, uh, but it is still spoken by a few thousand people in the hill country area. So um, that's the area uh, west of uh, central Texas. Mar right? SJ, the mermaid. Central west Texas would be Said, the hill country. That's really neat that there is a German population there. Uh, yes, I actually took a class in, uh, at the University of Texas called German Texas History, uh, where we... Uh, and, and uh, where we, um, it, it was a symposium where we uh, did analysis of this particular group of immigrants. And we actually had some field trips where we met some of them as well. Um, I actually didn't get along well with the teacher at all. And uh, so uh, it, that's the uh, bad thing, the, the professor for that class. But I'll always remember that class. It's so weird. It was in like a, a cafeteria, the largest, it was in Jester Dorm, which is the largest dormitory in the United States. One oh, of the largest. And at Jester Dorm, um, it smelled like a ca school cafeteria. Like, the school cafeterias have a particular sure, sure. smell. There's a German population here in Wisconsin, too. Oh, interesting. Um, there's, a, there's a particular Not smell. Lot. Said of a school cafeteria. Mr. G. Moses and Keanu packages to 1117 Onu Avenue, PO Box 37305 Honolulu, Hawaii 96823. Okay. Stream Continuing open. on. Said the new uh, merch is here. Pog chat check it out. Good. Https colon slash slash merch dot stream elements. All right. Uh, so um, agriculture. So Texas does freeze, unlike Hawaii, unlike Southern Florida, and unlike Southern California, like San Diego. Um, Texas has more colder weather, especially in the northern part of the state. Uh, the northern part of the state, in the Great Plains, you'll actually get snow every year. A lot of people don't know that, but it'll snow in the Panhandle of Texas, and usually in Dallas, a few times every year. It doesn't snow in San Antonio, and it doesn't snow in Austin, maybe once every 10 years. Uh, but it does snow in the Panhandle. And as far as agriculture, it gets so hot in Texas, like it's a desert uh, for part of the state, but it's very, very hot for the rest of the state. And Texas receives 100 degrees weather uh, almost like 30 or a couple months of the year. It's over 100 degrees. Adam Smith knows this. Said, what? Snow in Texas? That's the only way, Tracy. You know, a funny story in, in, uh, in another country, uh, what is it, Scandinavia, uh, the word Texas is slang for crazy. Like, did you see that guy? He's going Texas. He's completely Texas. He's crazy. No joke. I swear to God, you can look it up. Texas means crazy in other in parts of Europe, in parts of Eastern Europe mainly. Said, my ancestors less than three. In parts of Northern and Eastern Europe, uh, Texas is no has become slang for crazy. Like that guy's gone complete Texan. Uh, speaking of Western Europe, Texas is actually larger than every country in Western Europe. Can you believe that? Texas is larger than UK. Texas is larger than France. Texas is larger than Germany. You, you know Western Europe, right? Uh, Texas is larger than every country in Western Europe. All right. What else? 
Hello. Well, before I get off track, I've been pretty much on taking a good uh, track here. Just talking about agriculture. Texas, um, like I said, they have very uh, extremes in temperature. It can get, get freezing cold and it can get uh, extremely hot. All right. And it does get extremely cold and does get extremely hot. They don't necessarily have seasons. too and they do have lots of during the spring they have lots of thunderstorms and they lead the country in tornadoes um, but uh, this variation of weather it's not good for plants so here in Hawaii it's known as the most fertile place in the in the world it will in the majority of Hawaii if you're not on top of the mountains it's not Basically, and plants love that. So, Texas, you can grow a lot of things in Texas, but you can't grow a lot of things as well uh, because of the extremes in the weather. Some things that grow well in Texas, uh, we mentioned pecans, peanuts, corn, uh, peaches, wheat, uh, you know, horses, mohair, goats. You know, you don't need uh, cold weather for the, that doesn't affect livestock, uh, but all in sheep. Uh, Texas is actually number one in cotton production. I think I went over that in wool production as well. So sheep, cotton, and livestock, Texas is number one in beef production as well. So there's lots of uh, ranches in Texas. King Ranch in Texas is larger than Delaware uh, or Rhode Island. It's in the southeast part of the state, King Ranch. There's a ranch in Texas larger than some states as well. So. Um, so that so we talked about the economy. We talked about agri agriculture. Uh, we'll go over some of the cities really quickly here. Uh, the Texas coast. Uh, it's not the greatest coast. I can tell you that firsthand. I've been all over the Texas coast, and the waves are like a foot high. You can't surf in Texas. Um, there's there's jellyfish everywhere. I once stepped on a box jellyfish uh, when I was a kid, a little kid, on a trip to uh, Corpus Christi. And I remember my dad getting pissed off at me and then like spanking me, yelling at me and then pissing on me. So, yeah, he the only part he enjoyed, he enjoyed that part a lot, you know. But anyways, um, so painful. I also at the same year, I also was bitten by a scorpion oh, and a mean it. dog as well. Said. Oh, well, I've never seen it. Ellie with the two pounds. Aloha. Shoot. MRSJ, the mermaid, said, Fit Dono on YouTube. Thank you very much. Uh, MRSJ, um, the mermaid, said, As desk sticker. So, yeah, one year I got bit by a scorpion, a jellyfish, and a uh, big old mean dog. Rough eighth year of life, uh, let me tell you. When I was eight, it was yeah, hard. And then later that summer, the same summer, I got dropped off at a mall in New Orleans. Our dad was like trying to get somebody to kidnap us or something. I don't know. He left us there for 14 hours. Though we had to stick our hands in the, the wishing well fountain just to get enough money for food. But he just dropped us off in New Orleans. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I have a lot of memories of Texas, right? Uh, we're talking about the Texas coast. The largest city on the Texas coast is 325,000, Corpus Christi. Uh, that's where Selena is from, a uh, famous Latino artist, Latina artist. Um, I uh, taught a lot about Selena when I was a, a public school teacher in Hawaii, because uh, I think she has a, a wonderful story uh, to tell a lot of uh, us. I taught at um, socially, um, economically uh, disadvantaged schools, and uh, so saying, telling that story to those students uh, made sense. Uh, <clears throat> some more famous people yeah, from the Texas the coast. Uh, Janis Joplin is from Port Aransas. Uh, Port Aransas is a really small uh, tourist community uh, right there. It has like an island. Uh, Galveston Island has a lot of people, but uh, uh, Port Aransas uh, has a famous UT student and one of my favorite uh, female singers, and Janis Joplin. And she actually went to the university. Yeah. 
Janis Joplin actually went to the University of Texas like me. Uh, she went to she went there for one year, and uh, she had a horrible time at UT Austin. Uh, this was in the late '60s uh, when she was in eighteen when she was eighteen years old. The um, the, the student body at the UT Austin uh, for the yearbook for that year voted her ugliest boy. Can you believe that? And she acted really tough. And believe me, I know this. I've spoken to a, a, a teacher that went to school with her. One of my instructors at UT Austin knew Janis Joplin well uh, while they were students. Um, but uh, she was one of the first hippies. She would walk around campus barefoot and all the other students would make fun of her and stuff. And when the yearbooks came out, she was voted ugly as a boy. And uh, they said uh, she acted really tough like she didn't care or anything. Uh, but her roommate said that uh, she was locked in her room, her eyes out, just crying because uh, it hurt her so bad. And uh, a few weeks later, she met... Uh, a member, uh, one of the founding members of the Grateful Dead at a coffee shop on the drag and uh, they ended up becoming good friends and they decided to ditch Austin and hitchhike to San Francisco. Uh, so Janis Joplin, and um, his name is, slips my mind right now, he's actually a friend of my employer I think. <laughs> Funny, small world, right? Uh, th him and Janis Joplin hitchhiked to uh, the West Coast to San Francisco to hate Ashbury, and she becomes a uh, fucking legend and um, dies uh, tragically at age 27, uh, but leaves uh, some of the greatest, uh, most heartfelt music that um, we've ever heard. So I'm really glad the, um, uh, I'm glad the, uh, I, 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 I remember Janis Joplin being from Port Aransas and going to school at the University of Texas. Most of the information that I told you here about Janis Joplin, you can find uh, in many biographies written about her, and also um, some from some first-hand experience from an instructor I had at UT. All right, so that's the Texas coast. Uh, as far as um, uh, a little bit closer on the Rio Grande, Rio Grande means big river. Uh, one of the most uh, expanding cities in the United States is Laredo and McAllen. But no, they're, they're expanding in population because of immigration. So, uh, the uni um, so, uh, so, yeah, McGallan, Texas, and Laredo are two of the uh, most uh, bustling cities in the United States. Um, they're increasing in population immensely. Uh, Laredo is almost up to 300,000, and McGowan uh, is the same, about 250,000. Um, <clears> the uh, the immigration there, and the uh, we could we could have a whole class about uh, immigration on the Texas border, um, but we don't have time for that. And, and it's too it's too politically uh, polarizing as well. But we can just say that. Uh, both those cities on the on the both all the communities on the Rio Grande on the Texas side have had an increase of migrants um, more than we've ever seen, and uh, these are new Americans, and, and something must be dealt. Uh, um, you can't just send them all back. Um, so um, I, I'm not going to touch too much about this, but uh, I do have a lot of images though. <laughs> But no, I'm not even going to show you the images. It's just, it just it doesn't feel classy. Well, I'm just going to say that um, McAllen and Laredo and on the Texas border, they're some of the most increasing population cities, and um, that's because of the uh, immigration. Okay. Um, so uh, we talked about the economy. Um, it's the 13th largest economy in the world. It's over $2 trillion. Uh, That's before uh, um, Elon Musk and Joe Rogan moved uh, to Texas, so it's increased even more. Uh, the six flags of Texas. Texas is the only state in the United States that has had six uh, different flags over their country. And maybe class you can name them. Uh, France, Mexico, Spain, uh, the Republic of Texas. Texas was its own sovereign nation for nine and a half years, as I mentioned earlier in the lecture. Uh, so we have uh, France, Spain, Mexico, the 
uh, Texas uh, has had uh, more uh, uh, um, people. <laughs> Texas has had more countries on it than any other else. I'm going to be teaching different now. Now, this is crazy, Greg. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the teacher's gone crazy. <laughs> no, I just wanted to spice it up for a minute. All right, what we're talking about? Mexicans? <laughs> no, all right, continuing on. So, if you want to know my, my, I was born in Corville, all right? Teacher feels like acting goofy. Teacher ate some candy, now he's like, that something, I don't know. No, I was born in Corville, and uh, then I was raised in San Antonio, and I spent 10 or 12 years living in Austin, Texas. Austin is the only liberal community in Texas. Uh, some of the top uh, music and film festivals happen in Austin, Texas every year with South by Southwest and ACL, Austin City Limits Music Festival. Austin's a decent community and I enjoy living there. Teacher, what is that tattoo under your eye? Have you killed someone off by taking a gang activity? No, it's a G and I, I'm having another laser oh, surgery, my fifth movie. one this weekend. Said. So it's South being, you won't be, you won't even be able to see the tattoo on Monday. If you could keep them relative. Uh, towards the topic at hand and not any face tattoos of your instructor, okay? So, uh, continuing on. Uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about Mexicans? Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, on, on a uh, statistical note, 20%, uh, I believe it is, 20% of all uh, people in Texas were born in another country. Mexico. <laughs> or... or, or um, uh, El Salvador or Guatemala, uh, but yeah, 20% now, one out of five people in Texas were born in another country. So that's not as high as it is in California, uh, but it is high. And I'm not saying anything against, I'm just, uh, don't, you know, kill the messenger. I'm just saying, you know, it is what it is. I don't have an answer for the immigration policy. The mainstream media doesn't have an answer. The Republicans don't have an answer. The Democrats don't have an answer. They just want votes. Yeah, the G's my trademark. I'll even a, put a, a G in the uh, corner here. That G's for you. So, uh, 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 that's it. We're, I'm not going to talk about the immigration. I do have some good pictures. I'll put that up uh, during the end uh, where we play the Texas State song. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed living in Austin. Um, you know, I wouldn't ever live in Dallas or Houston. They're one of the largest, uh, most crime-ridden cities in the United States. Uh, Dallas has the largest state fair in the United States. San Antonio has the largest rodeo in the United States. Um, so, if you're interested in that. Uh, the largest hurricane, the largest natural disaster that ever happened, happened on the Gulf Coast. Sure, to get you. In Galveston in 1900. Uh, and it caused thousands of deaths. It was the most, uh, de uh, the most uh, expensive uh, um and uh, most costly as far as uh, lives are concerned in the uh, United States history, all the way back in 1900 in Galveston on the Texas coast. Um, let's see what Google has to say about that. Hey Google, volume nine. Hey Google, tell us about the Galveston uh, hurricane. Hey Google, tell us about the Galveston hurricane in 1900. On the website npr.org, they say, the great Galveston storm came ashore the night of September 8, 1900, with an estimated strength of a category four. It remains the deadliest natural disaster and the worst hurricane in US history. From 6,000 to 12,000 people died on Galveston Island and the mainland. Texas's most advanced city was nearly destroyed. No. Yeah. At the time, That's sad. it was Texas's most advanced city, Galveston. Shipping was a lot more important back then in 1900 than it is now. So, um, another thing about Austin, Texas is 6th Street and the drag, and uh, Guadalupe Street is the drag. 6th Street is a collection of bars downtown. Well, yeah, we'll talk about a little history, talk about a little immigration, um, talk about little scenic stuff, you know, where I'm from, Austin. Sixth Street is a 
collection of bars where you see live music. Now, Nashville, Tennessee says that they're the live music capital of the world, but Sixth Street also calls themselves the live music capital of the world. Austin also, their slogan in Austin is keep Austin weird. The slogan in Portland, keep Portland weird. So one of them, and, and, and let me tell you something, you want to see weird, come to Hawaii. Here in Hawaii, we have people with eyes on the side of their head, all right? Portland, and, and you don't know weird, you're just a bunch of liberal crybabies. Austin, you're weird for Texas, but not out of Texas. You want to see weird, come to Hawaii, okay? Right? Oh, that's Jay the Mermaid. So th Sir, that's the slogan of Austin. strange stepbrother in law was arrested on 6th Street, in prison for 30 years, L-U-L. Wow. That, talk about a bad night out. All the liberal Californians who ruin California move to Austin. Yeah, there's so many liberal Californians in Austin. Austin votes uh, consistently Democratic in state elections and for some reason, and also local elections and also uh, national elections as well. They're the only county in Texas, other than some of the southern counties around Laredo and McGowan, which I talked about. Uh, have had an increase of thousands of people, millions, about a million people now, um, and uh, they tend oh, to vote Democratic. Said, yeah, my liberal cousin moved to Austin. Um, I got out of Austin, and uh, I don't plan on ever going back. I did know Austin better than anywhere else in the world. Now I know this island of Oahu better than anywhere else in the world, and I'm much more happier here than I ever was in Austin. So, uh, continuing on, um, what were we talking about? Class? <laughs> well, we were talking about Guadalupe Street, the drag. Um, you know, I wrote a book, Gonzo Education. I talk about uh, the drag a lot in my first book, Gonzo Education. I mentioned Sixth Street as well. I mentioned Austin, too. Uh, the majority of my first book, my first book takes place in Austin, Texas, um, at the University of Texas and in and around the uh, campus there. Uh, so if you want to know more about Texas, that's a really great book uh, that you can learn about it. Um, so we talked about um, East Texas with Houston. We talked about the Texas oh, coast. Uh, West Texas, yes. you'll find El Paso. Mr. G's book on Amazon, Thank you so much, Mrs. J. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So uh, in Texas, uh, West Texas, the largest city you'll find there is El Paso. Uh, almost 700,000 people live in El Paso, and also you'll have find Big Bend uh, National Park. It's one of the largest national parks in the United States, and there are actually uh, mountain lions and bears uh, in Big Bend National Park. It's the only place that you'll find bears in Texas is in Big Bend National Park. Like I said, Texas has 10 different climate regions, uh, so you have all types of climate there, including uh, desert, woodlands, um, mountainous, uh, and in a lot of different other climate regions as well. Oh, so uh, some inventions that came from Texas. Well, everybody knows about Dr. Pepper, right? Uh, Dr. Pepper uh, was invented a few years before Coke was invented uh, by a pharmacist in Texas. And the secret uh, still remains secret uh, um, in two different bank vaults on two different sides of the country. One is in New York City and the other one is in uh, San Diego. And uh, the secret recipe is uh, half of it is in each spot for whatever reason. Another interesting thing about Dr. Pepper is in Europe, Coke owns Dr. Pepper and Coke makes and distributes Dr. Pepper. But in Canada, Pepsi owns Dr. Pepper and Pepsi makes and distributes Dr. Pepper. I thought that was really interesting. And you know, I was learning about Dr. Pepper. All right. So uh, what else was invented in uh, Texas? Snickers was invented in Texas. Uh, the first 7-Eleven, the first gas co convenience store uh, was 7-Eleven in Dallas, Texas. Um, I actually worked at three different 7-Elevens in my life. And um, I can tell you, uh, the first one started in Dallas, Texas. And the reason they call it 7-Eleven is because it would open at 7 a.m. and it would close 11 p.m., which at the time was uh, somewhat uh, revolutionary because most of the stores at the time they would not be open that late and they wouldn't open that early either so 7-eleven that's where they get the name 7-eleven and like i said the very first one uh came in texas in dallas uh you know a funny thing the margarita was also invented in texas at the same 
7-Eleven. Uh, he got the idea from the Coke machine and the slushy machine. The slushy class predates the margarita. Can you believe that? The margarita is not some ancient Mexican drink that they were drinking, you know, in the 1800s. No, the margarita is a modern invention. The margarita is a modern, modern invention, uh, and it came from the idea of the slushy machine as well. So the person that invented uh, the 7-Eleven also uh, was responsible for the uh, margarita. Uh, something else that Texas invented is chili. Uh, you know, everybody makes their, their own chili, but the very first chili uh, came from the uh, cowboys on the, uh, on the Old West Trail in Texas. And also breast implants. So. Okay, so uh, those are some... Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting, right? Uh, so, uh, those are some interesting, fun uh, inventions from Texas. So, I want to talk about history for a little bit. Uh, so, I know, uh, you know, it's Wednesday and we haven't had a class uh, all week. Uh, last week, I think maybe we had class once. I uh, know we had class three times last week. We had class Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday last week. Normally, like I said, we have class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, we don't have a large uh, class today, but we do have uh, some people here. And I really appreciate all of you guys. You're going to be receiving extra credit today. Even you, Sean, Sean. Um, but no, uh, seriously, serious question. Being born and raised in Texas, we get the story of the Alamo shoved down our face. Our, 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 our shoved down, yeah. Anyways, uh, so do any of you know the story of the Alamo? Is that something that's taught uh, nationwide or is that just a Texas story? Because um, I actually wrote a rap song about the Alamo in third grade and I won like some contest in my little uh, elementary school at Thousand Oaks Elementary. Um, RSJ the Mermaid said, it's nationwide, I think. Okay, so Mrs. J, you know, and I, 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 you know, you're a very knowledgeable person about uh, historical information and uh, many things. Uh, but uh, have any, anyone else of you guys know the story of the Alamo? Is that something that's common knowledge for everybody? Shoshan, Cody, you guys know about the Alamo? I'll go ahead and put a picture of it. All right, well, in Texas, they shove that story down your throat. That's the, uh, the uh, uh, analogy I was looking for. And, um, and, uh, they, and, and some of the, the uh, participants in that story uh, you know all about William B. Travis. Austin is located in Travis County, uh, named after William B. Travis. Um, Stephen F. Austin, he was known as the father of Texas. That's where Austin is named after, Stephen F. Austin. Uh, Santa Ana was the bad guy. Uh, he was the president of Mexico that was defeated by the Texan settlers. And he actually uh, didn't get uh, killed by the Texans, but uh, ran off into isolation, I believe, in... Uh, Springfield, Illinois, uh, where he invented bubble gum. Oh, sure. it's yes. Lone Star, oh, Lone Star Beer, uh, that's like the Pabst Blue Ribbon of Texas. I think it's made by the same company, too. Uh, so the most common beer, they drink Shiner Rock. Oh, golly, how did I live in Texas so sure, long? Drinking gum. Shiner Rock, listening to country music and watching sports? <laughs> God. Anyways, I'm much more happier here in Hawaii. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, they, they drink Shiner Rock, they drink Lone Star, and they drink Rolling Rock beer in Texas. Uh, but what were we talking about? We were talking about something. Oh, yeah, the Alamo. Uh, so, everybody says, remember the Alamo, and, uh, remember the Alamo. I used to have a cat named Oldie, and Oldie would be like, remember the Oldie. Just kidding. That's an inside joke in case MCATS is watching, right? <laughs> uh, okay, teachers say crazy stuff. Davey Crockett. Davey, Davey Crockett, king of the wild frontier. So Davey Crockett, that's a Davey, the Davey Crockett song. There was this kid on our bus in like second grade. And his name, I was friends with his brother. His older brother was named Joseph Cole. And his name was Davey Cole. Joseph Cole, yeah, I think so. And Davey Cole. 
And the whole time on the bus, he would sing Davy every day. Oh, Davy oh, Crockett, king says, of the wild frontier. And then uh, eventually all the kids like beat him up because he just kept singing it over and over. But um, Davy Crockett was a pioneer uh, that wore a coonskin hat. And he, uh, as, as well as everybody else, all the other uh, Texas settlers, they lost their lives at the Battle of the Alamo. So everybody says to remember the Alamo, but these, uh, these people that I mentioned, Davy Crockett, William B. Travis, uh, Stephen F. Austin, they died at the Alamo. Uh, it wasn't until the Jacinto where the Texans overpowered uh, Santa Ana and his army, and Santa Ana ran off uh, to live, like I said, in Illinois, where he later invented bubble gum. So thank God for Santa Ana, right? No. They, I guess they, they probably would have killed him. They was brutal during that time. And like I said, every fighter in the Alamo lost their life against the Mexican soldiers. The, rem, the reason they remember the Alamo so much is because it's a small group, like less than 100 Texans fought off thousands of Mexican soldiers. And, and they fought to the death, literally. And uh, in this small building that's still uh, in, in San Antonio, Texas, it's on the uh, screen here. And Ozzy Osbourne once pissed on the Alamo and was banned from San Antonio for 15 years. But then he came back, and I saw him live twice at the Ozfest, too. And he kicked some ass! Eh. I was 17, so yeah. I'm not 17 anymore, and I do not head to bang to Black Sabbath. <laughs> but no, I did see him twice at the Ozfest. The first one I got kicked out for smoking weed. Can you believe that? But anyways... Um, so yeah, the Alamo, everybody says remember the Alamo. I'm, I'm going to say a little rap about the Alamo. It happened in 1836, about 10 days. And like I said, this was very brutal. There was a time after the Alamo uh, where I think it was like 40 soldiers were captured and they were all shot at gunpoint and uh, at point blank range. And uh, the bullets they were using were, weren't good and so a lot of them didn't die. And so they had to be strangled or... Uh, anyways, uh, hey Google, tell us about the Alamo. According to Wikipedia, the Alamo Mission, commonly called the Alamo and originally known as the Mission San Antonio de Valero, is a historic Spanish mission and fortress compound founded in the 18th century by Roman Catholic missionaries in what is now San Antonio, Texas, United States. It was the site of the Battle of the Alamo in 1836. Okay, so that's good. So, uh, yeah, Texas has the Alamo. I'll, uh, I'll say a little rap. It started way back in history with Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie. William B. Travis was in it too. He brought Texans like me and you. Santa Ana was the enemy, not a cool guy. He was a beating at San Jacinto, just as easy as pie. Texans got their freedom. Santa Ana left town. The Texans were so happy, they really got down. Down. <laughs> then I had my friend doing the beatbox. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it was, uh, it was a pretty good for a third grader. So uh, that's what Texas is known for, uh, the Alamo. Uh, they're also number one in many other things. Number one, oil, gas, beef, cotton, wool. Um, they have more horses than any other state. They have more billionaires than any other state. There's actually 64 billionaires that live in Texas. Like I said, uh, it's the 13th largest economy in the world if it was its own country uh, with over $2 trillion. Um, what else? Uh, the largest church congregation is located in Lakewood, uh, Houston, Texas. It has over 50,000 members. The largest church, you guys know uh, the very controversial uh, pastor. Um, he does uh, infomercials. Um, Joel Osteen. You know who I'm talking about? Joel Osteen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Joel Osteen. Uh, but yeah, he's very country. But that's actually the largest church in the United States. Something's not right when I watch uh, Joel Osteen. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, promote something like that. Uh, they're they're the fattest state in the United States. Thirty percent of uh, Texas is overweight. Um, you know, there's really great Mexican food. Uh, when we start the slideshow, um, the one thing that I miss most about Texas is uh, cheap Mexican food. Uh, little Mexican restaurants where you can go in and get a feast for ten dollars. Yes, we are live. 
<clears throat> but yeah, uh, what else? Um, Whole Foods started in downtown Austin in 1980, the first Whole Foods. I used to hang out there all the time. Not in 1980, but, you know, the 90s I did. Um, the richest, one of the richest persons in the world, Alice Walton, lives in Texas, lives in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, she's worth over $60 billion. She's the only daughter of Sam Walton. Uh, I mentioned earlier Elon Musk uh, has also decided to move to Texas and open up a Tesla plant in South Texas, like near the border. Uh, let me go and put up another uh, image here. Uh, what else? We talked about the Galveston earthquake. Uh, Texas has more tornadoes than anywhere else in the world. Uh, Texas has its own army, navy, and air force. It's the only state in the United States that has a separate uh, military uh, air force. They don't have uh, Texas Marines, but they have the Texas Rangers, uh, which is a, its own uh, entity as well, uh, So, which would be similar to the Marines. So in Texas, you have the Texas Air Force, and these are very, they have Texas Air Force bases and Texas Naval bases as well. Uh, so that's something that definitely separates it from every other state that we've, every other state in the United States. Uh, what else? Uh, I mentioned Texas in Norwegian is slang for crazy because uh, Texans are known uh, to be very robust and outgoing and uh, somewhat obnoxious. Uh, they did a survey and they, uh, they uh, determined that the majority of the people uh, where they, uh, when they're traveling abroad and they're asked where are you from, uh, the majority of people from every other state say that they're from the United States. But people that are from Texas, they don't say they're from the United States, they say that they're from Texas. So, um, I didn't mention the Texas Panhandle. The two largest cities are Lubbock and Amarillo. Uh, Lubbock has about a quarter million people and Amarillo has a little bit less. 200,000. Uh, they're both, um, you know, in the uh, big in the oil sector and the oil industry, Lubbock and Amarillo. Amarillo has one of the top uh, state parks in the United States, in Texas. And also uh, Lubbock um, is where uh, Buddy Holly was from. And there's the Buddy Holly Museum in Lubbock, Texas, which is a really nice place. I've been there. Fucking, I know a lot about Texas. Like, God. <laughs> no, but no, I did live there. For a long time. Uh, next week we're going to be learning about Hawaii, and I also know a lot about Hawaii. But I mean, uh, we can't fit all of uh, everything about Texas. We can't fit everything about Texas in one class, and we can't fit everything about Hawaii in one class either. Uh, so, uh, you know, each of these classes I try to keep about an hour and a half. You know, nobody likes a class that's longer than that. I've had enough school in my life to know that. Uh, the longest a class should be is about an hour and a half. Any, any longer than that, it just gets uh, too much. So what else? Um, the highest point in Texas is Guadalupe Peak. Uh, Guadalupe Peak is about a, a half the size of uh, um, Mount Everest, I guess you could say. And it's located in the Guadalupe Mountains. This is an image of Guadalupe Peak. Uh, hey, Google, tell us about Guadalupe Peak. Hey Google, what's Guadalupe Peak? According to Wikipedia, Guadalupe Peak, also known as Signal Peak, is the highest natural point in Texas, with an elevation of 8,751 feet above sea level. It is located in Guadalupe Mountains National Park, and is part of the Guadalupe Mountains Range in southeastern New Mexico and west Texas. So 8,000 is actually pretty high. Uh, when you look at it, Denver is known as the Mile High City. So Denver, you know, how many feet is a mile? What, 2,000, right? Um, so what else about Texas? They have the highest speed limit in the country of 85 miles per hour. That stretches on IH-35. Um, I didn't go over the flag or the logo. Uh, the unofficial logo is actually uh, an invention of somebody that I knew. Uh, well, at least the, the um, place uh, she was part of the, uh, the company. That, uh, Don't mess with Texas. Uh, was a slogan uh, to, to uh, promote uh, anti-littering uh, during the 80s and 90s. And it was such a popular slogan uh, that it became the uh, unofficial state slogan of Texas, Don't Mess With Texas. And it was actually created by the advertising company GSDM, uh, located on 6th Street in downtown Austin. 
Uh, my sister was an advertising agent uh, working on that particular campaign. And I um, actually uh, met Quentin Tarantino at the GSDM during South by Southwest as well. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a very uh, memorable slogan, don't mess with Texas, something that's known uh, worldwide. Um, so what else? I think that's about it. Um, Texas has a lot of bats. Uh, they uh, are responsible for um, fermenting, I mean not fermenting, they're responsible for fertilizing uh, the uh, agave plants which provide uh, agave sweetener and as well as tequila as well. So without the uh, Mexican uh, bats that live in Texas, one of the largest bat colonies is uh, right on the uh, right on the uh, Lady Bird Johnson Lake, right down in downtown Austin. They used to call it Town Lake. Now it's called Lady Bird Johnson Lake. I don't know. I'm never uh, planning on going back to Texas. Um, so yeah, Texas is the only state that has the uh, written in the Constitution that they can leave the uh, United States at any time. And I think uh, we covered just about everything. Um, now we're going to go on a, a short little slideshow of Texas. Um, I'm going to show you some fun facts of Texas and some uh, famous foods of Texas. Now a lot of times when I switch over to the slideshow, portion of the lecture. A lot of times it F's out, so uh, bear with me if it F's out. Uh, you may have to refresh your screen, but it always comes back, so we're going to go and start uh, the slideshow right now. This first image is an image of Guadalupe Peak. Whenever you're ready. Alright, so uh, while we're back here, this is my uh, Instagram on the, stream, on the screen, at Gregory Joseph Brandt. Uh, we also have at Mr. G Livestream. That's the Instagram for the particular class. And uh, continuing on um, with the uh, program here, uh, we're going to start off with just some fun facts about Texas. Um, I told you uh, we talked about the six flags of Texas. This is the six flags of Texas right here. We have Spain, United States, the Texas, the Republic of Texas, Mexico, France and the uh, Confederate Army. So those are the six flags of Texas. Um, now, I spoke about the hurricane, the, the uh, largest natural disaster in the United States happened with the Galveston hurricane in 1900. Uh, it's the most uh, costly as far as lives. Thousands of people died. And Jordan, aloha. Okay, so we're back. Um, that was the Texas Longhorn. Uh, the Texas state animal is the Texas Longhorn. And uh, once again, if you want to know more about me, your teacher, Mr. G, uh, you can go to the website on the screen, gxnetwork.live. So hopefully there's no more Fs. Uh, the Texas state animal is the Texas Longhorn, but also the armadillo. Uh, an armadillo, it's, it looks like amarillo, right? Amarillo means yellow in Spanish. <laughs> But the uh, armadillo there. All right, some more fun facts Facebook about Texas. Said, Texas, I've never been there. Yeah, it's it's very popular. I know you um, you know if you're from another uh, country too. So uh, some more fun things about Texas. Like I said earlier, it's the second most populous state, and uh, it's the second uh, largest state. The state song is Texas Our Texas, and I will. Uh, I'll we'll play that. We showed you Guadalupe Peak is the lowest point. And then the lowest point in Texas is right here. The lowest point in Texas is the Rio Grande. <laughs> and these are some, uh, looks like we got some tourists from uh, Mexico here crossing the Rio Grande. And uh, like I said, uh, every day uh, it's becoming uh, more and more popular. Um, a lot of the uh, immigrants even have. We're shooting on, uh, you know, really good internet with 5G cameras, but we are broadcasting on uh, two different services. So um, I think uh, once they'll catch up uh, with the tech, you know, maybe I'm just a, a foot ahead of the technology, which seems to be the case. Uh, but yeah, while you're watching and while I, we have a minute here, you can check out my uh, regular Instagram, which is at Gregory Joseph Brandt. I post there on, uh, almost every day. 
And if you want to keep up to date with what the next class is going to be, then uh, you can do that. Uh, so, the state flower of Texas is the blue bonnet, as you can see on the, uh, on the board there. And also the state bird is the mockingbird. I think we went over that. Uh, also, uh, one of the, lar the best schools in the United States is the University of Texas. This is where I graduated from, the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, it's a really great school. I graduated from the journalism program. It's a second-ranked journalism program in the United States. Uh, the second-ranked school in, the in Texas is Texas A&M. And Texas A&M is a conservative university. They have a lot of Republicans there, and they have a really strong agricultural programs. So, uh, some fun facts about Texas. Uh, Texas has more than 2.8 million small businesses, more than any other state. Uh, diversity, over 710,000 self-employed minorities in Texas. Uh, Texas is the largest economy in the United States, the second largest economy in the United States, only <clears throat> behind California. Uh, Dr. Pepper, like we mentioned, was invented in 1885, a few years before Coke. Coca-Cola was invented a little bit after that. And uh, what is Texas known for? Well, they're known for warm weather, live music, and awesome barbecue, as well as a uh, number one in oil and gas production, and beef, and cotton, and uh, like I said, many other things. So we're going to uh, get into the foods real quick here. Let's just do a couple more fun facts. Uh, here on the screen, I have Texas compared with Russia. So, the population of Texas is 29 million. The population of Russia is 144 million. The GDP of Texas is 1.7 trillion. The GDP for Russia is 1.2 trillion. Wow, guys. So, who has a higher GDP, Texas or Russia? Class? Texas. Texas has more money than Russia. Can you believe that? The GDP per capita is 58000 And in Russia, the GDP per capita... So what does that tell you, Klaus? Well, it tells you that Russia has a lot of people, but they also have a lot of poor people. Their GDP per capita is 8000 There's There's a lot of peasants in Russia. You know? Like, I mean... You know, the mainstream media isn't going to tell you that. The mainstream media is going to show you uh, Putin and his uh, nice suit and all of his uh, fancy military devices. But Russia, like China, has uh, billion, millions of starving people, millions of impoverished people as well. So as far as human rights go, that's, uh, that's all I have to say about that. All right, I think that's enough fun facts about Texas. Now... Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into the uh, to the nitty gritty. Uh, let's get into some Texas cuisine. So uh, first we have chicken fried steak, yummy in my tummy. There's a place in San Antonio, Texas. It's right near the jail, uh, but the chicken fried steak there, you can uh, get uh, huge, and they have like a contest. I forget the name of the place, but if you finish the chicken fried steak then uh, you get to keep it, or you get to, you get a okay, free t-shirt. So, according to uh, foodnetwork.com, uh, beyond barbecue, the one dish that best exemplifies the Texas spirit is chicken fried steak. It represents all the best things about Texas. It's huge, unapologetic, and undeniably delicious. For one of the very best examples, trek an hour south of Austin to the quaint historic district of Green, Texas spelled G-R-U-E-N-E, where you'll find not only the state's oldest dance hall, where Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan have played, <clears throat> but also a chicken fried steak worth the re re requisite post-meal nap. Formerly the boiler room for the town's cotton gin, the rickety three-story grist mill on the banks of the Guadalupe River was transformed into a restaurant in 1977. Ever since, it's been a beacon for chicken fried steak fans thanks to the fluffy but still crispy buttermilk batter that barely clings to the cubed steak, which is packed loosely to maximize the juicy flavors. All right, that sounds delicious. Uh, so, uh, Texas is known for its barbecue. It's known for its chicken fried steak, but it's more known for its BBQ. 
And uh, this right here uh, is some barbecue brisket that I have on the screen here. So uh, this uh, barbecue place here, uh, it's known as one of the best barbecue places, Franklin's Barbecue, and it's in.